across this. I think I'm gonna fall into the ditch. Seriously, it's not good. Hey, baby girl. I know. It is all weird today. And that is our drive. Happy Monday, everyone. Dr. Peter's driving today. Third week of work. Got Penelope in the car. Penelope. What are you doing? We're continuing to test to figure out why she's not concentrating her urine. She's been having accidents in the house. She had a kidney infection that we treated, but her kidneys still are not better. So, a few more tests for Miss Penelope, and it's Monday, and we're on our way to work, and I'm not driving. Yay! Wishes for Penelope, right? Penelope. Oh, you're so good. Such a good girl. I knew if you studied hard, if you concentrated, that you could do it. You like that? She concentrated and she did well on her test. Oh, whoa! Right on the lips. <laughs> Was there a little tongue involved? There might have been. There might have been. Good morning, Laura. Morning. Sorry, my dog French kissed you. Hi. It's all good. It's a job hazard. What you doing now? We're drawing up our portrait sim for our ACTH stem. So do you get, I know nothing about this. Do you get blood before? I get blood before, we get a pre-sample, I administer some portrait sim, and then an hour later I take a post-sample. Okay. Is it gonna hurt? It will not hurt. Are you gonna hurt my dog? I'm not gonna hurt your dog, no. Okay. Wait, wait did you see that one? Watch. Penelope, sit. Sit. She slides backwards. Yeah. <laughs> She, she, no, she literally does not have to sit on a slippery floor. She didn't get the neuron for sitting. And look at his white blood cell count, his CBC is completely awesome. perfect. Okay. So we talked about alternating doxa with tenovia because mm -hmm. he can have two more doxorubicins. Okay. In the original study with tenovia, mm -hmm. it was about a 77% response rate. But then when they alternated in the second study with doxorubicin actually increased the response rate. So he can get two more doxos. So I would alternate back and forth and back and forth. And he handled doxo just fine, right? Yeah. The only thing he had a reaction to was the bank. Yeah. Okay. So I'm fine with that. So I would give him that, and then we'll give him Tenovia. Tenovia but we're doing that. But is that the one that you want to come in early? I'm going to come She's in. She's getting married. <laughs> Why are you holding your own creature? She shouldn't be, but I got Look how good he's been. No. I know. That's okay, but I thought you didn't like to. I don't usually, but I got a really pathetic look when I went to give him a treat. Like, he figured out what he was here for. Hey Lynn, get some blood work on you, right, and then some chest x-rays. Good boy. He liked watching Walter bounce up and down. <laughs> He's a good boy. Awesome. And Dr. Sue got it on video. Yes. Yay. Yay, buddy. Dylan is a 10 year old dog that I have known for about two and a half years. He had osteosarcoma. He had his amputation at the end of March of 2016. We did some chemo, and then we were going to start him on metronomic low dose oral chemo. And in August of 2016, we saw two nodules on his chest x rays in his lungs. We were concerned that he had early metastasis, and it shouldn't metastasize that early with everything that we did. And so so I started him on a new medication at the time for him, Palladia, anti-angiogenic to inhibit those blood vessels. All right, well, he can get off the table. Fantastic. Thank you. 
Look, look how straight those are. I know, see? Right? See? Soon you're not even going to need me to double check. Exactly. Good job. I saw him about two months ago, and we had some radiographs that I showed you guys, and Dad was concerned because recently he's lethargic. And what I'm not sure, like typically if osteosarcoma metastasizes or spread to the lung, there should be nodules everywhere throughout the lung, and he just really has this one in front of the heart that compared to two months ago is bigger, but I still don't see any obvious spread elsewhere in the lung, so I'm not even sure if this is a primary lung cancer, if this weird stabilization of osteosarcoma metastasis, which is really odd or something benign. You get nervous when you aspirate? No. He really doesn't. No, I meant that it was you that passed gas. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did today is we decided, because my husband is here, to do an ultrasound guided aspirate of this lung mass. And we could do that because the lung mass was right against the body wall, so we didn't have to go through lung, because if this was lung, you wouldn't want to go through that when you're sticking your needle through. So it was right against the body wall, we sedated him, and we're waiting to see whether it's sarcoma, which would support metastasis, carcinoma, which would suggest a primary lung tumor, or something else. Like one cell. That's when your diagnosis is right dead. No. Are you doing it again? Not with this smell. Taste it. <laughs> Taste it. <laughs> Step your faces right close. It's a risk that the aspirin may be non-diagnostic, but we're hopeful that we'll get an answer. And then we're going to decide, do we want to put him back on chemo or the osteosarcoma immunotherapy vaccine or some oral chemo? So that's what we're trying to figure out for him. And he did great. Stinky. Steph, don't wave it towards Dr. Huter. Bye. Hi. I love you guys. All right, Daddy's waiting in the car. You ready to go? We'll go get some treats. Let's get some treats and then we go home. Oh, good girl. Chew. Please chew. Okay. Say bye to everyone.